Hello, everyone. I'm so excited that you've joined us today for another episode of Momversations. Can you believe that we're actually, this is like going into our third and fourth month, and then next thing you know, it'll be a year. And boy, what a year it's been. I'm telling you, if anybody would have told me that uh, all the things that are going on in the world would have been happening, it would be very hard to believe. I'm so excited that, you know, we have some wonderful guests as usual. Our themes vary. Um, St. Anne's, we do a lot of work here. I know I may talk about these things um, over and over, but, you know, we have new guests watching each time. And so I want to make sure people completely understand who we are and what we do. First of all, the theme of Momversations is about the fact that motherhood um, and families, the work we are grounded in here at St. Anne's. You know, years ago we were uh, a maternity home, but since then we've currently um, evolved to having, you know, a large early childhood education program with Head Start and Early Head Start. We actually have over 600 families that are a part of our ECE programs. And right now we continue to provide support for those families through distance learning. We also have been providing food and support and resources every day between 9 and 11 on our campus, doing it in a distance learning, um, in a distance stay safety style where we're having people social distance, driving up, picking up food and resources. And we're very excited to be able to partner with New Village and be able to provide the food that is necessary and in support of the fact that these children are not in program right now, but they would normally be provided those resources within our Head Start. We're also providing housing. And you can imagine during this time and also in Los Angeles, you know how incredibly expensive um, housing is. And we want to make sure that we have housing. And uh, when we talk about affordable housing, I always say I want to have housing that anyone would, anyone would want to live in. People need and deserve to have housing that is beautiful, amazing, and feel as if that this is the next step to their progression. Today we're going to talk about wellness, and we'll talk more about that. But being well is when you know that you are safe and have a roof over your head and that you have the food that you need to be able to, you know, survive, to be able to give your children the type of care and guidance and support in a loving environment to, for play and joy. And joy is challenging during this time. You know, people are locked in under safer at home. You know, California right now is at the height of, you know, the pandemic. But we continue to be safe in our environment. We're making sure our transitional housing participants are safe and that they're getting everything they need. We're making sure our permanent supportive housing, Beverly Terrace, which we'll show you a little bit of that program a little bit later, that everyone is safe and thriving. We want to make sure our workforce development program continues to thrive because if people don't have an opportunity to have these skills to be able to work, to be able to make that living that is necessary to survive in the community, you know, our work will be in vain. We saw, and the founders well before me, saw St. Anne's as a place that would allow a full spectrum of services to allow wellness from making sure that people are physically fit. We have um, our, our staff who make sure that everyone gets the medical care that they need. We have staff meeting our emotional wellness needs around counseling. We have a significant mental health department that provides that other layer of wellness. So as we talk today, we're going to talk with... Um, as we always do, have a past resident, a past participant that was in our program to share. And today I'm excited to, you know, talk about the fact that we have another board member. And the reason I want to say that, that's so important. When people are a part of a program, it's important to have them come back and be able to sit on the governance side. Have them share from the perspective of being a part of the program. They lived it. They walk through it. You know, a lot of times we talk a lot about lived experience and what that means, someone who has gone through the program. So we'll be talking to Shamir more, and I'm very excited that she'll be on with us. But when we think about wellness as a topic, wellness isn't just the absence of illness. Wellness is truly being able to grow, heal, have that emotional, that physical, that mental strength and ability 
and for us to be aware and how we advocate and how we move forward. So when we talk about wellness today, I feel like St. Anne's is a part of helping people heal and be whole. And that's a level of wellness, along with we're also going to talk with um, a little later, Dr. Lisa Nicholas, who is a medical doctor who deals with wellness in a variety of ways. So I'm excited to have two moms with us today who are going to share. Now, Shamir, she has been dynamic. It's the day I met her, I was like, oh my goodness, she is amazing. And as you see some photos of here of her and her son, Diami, outdoors, doing great things with her son, making sure total wellness, homeschooling before the pandemic. And so, you know, she is Mira Beauty. She's going to tell us a little bit more about that. And she also has a nonprofit called the Healthy Balance Foundation. And Healthy Balance right now during this COVID pandemic is something that we are all seeking. So Shamir, I would like to welcome you today. Hello. How are you? I want to make sure we can hear you because I, I, I'm not, my earbuds, I'm not sure. Are you unmuted? That's all right. That's okay. Thank you. It, look, in this world of virtual everything, it is an ongoing process. And I tell everybody, this program is live television. And so this is reality, the real reality TV. So welcome, Shamir. Thank you for joining us today. You're a part of the St. Anne's family. And we are quite proud of all that you have accomplished and will continue to accomplish. As I said, you're the founder of the Healthy Balance Foundation, a former resident um, working with the board. And so tell us a little bit about, you know, your vision of wellness, because from the day I met you, you've been trying to encourage me to eat well and take care of my skin and all of that good stuff. I'm trying, Shamir. I really am trying to do a better job. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what motivated you to work so hard to accomplish wellness goals while trying to juggle parenting of your son, Diami. Mm, yeah, um, rooted in, in that, in a sense, um, wellness is, actually, I find wellness through the concept of the healthy balance idea mm -hmm. that I've been kind of developing over, just through myself. Um, but it's, yeah, the, the juggle <laughs> is, has been, um, beautiful in a challenging sense. Mm -hmm. I, um, excuse me, I have, I have to catch myself for a second because I was the whole thing. Um, I was able to, sorry, the question was about starting juggling. Um, That's all right. And we're juggling now because you're juggling, you know, things are popping up on the screen. It's all right. So tell us, let, let's bring it back to the basics. You find healthy balance. You talk about finding that wellness through a healthy balance. So talk to me about the healthy balance. How do you juggle parenting and the wellness, and especially during this time? Yeah, um, I find, I actually, I make it where I center myself in breathing. I have to just mm -hmm. kind of stop to reevaluate the situation myself and then the situation before I get into it. So that is a is its own challenge because I have to be able to adjust mm -hmm. to whatever is going on. Um, that, <clears throat> yeah, that that's kind of the basics right now is just really just being able to breathe through the process, letting that breath kind of direct me where to go next and trusting, trusting where it's going to take me. Okay. I'm here now. <laughs> I've made okay. it to this point um, yes. through the many different challenges that I've faced. So, so the breath helps you focus on the physical and mental during these stressful moments um, yeah. uh, of life. So let's do that right now. Help me what to give, oh. give me, let's come on, give me that breath, help me. So we can yeah. both relax in that moment. And those who are watching can feel, come on. So what would that look like? Give me, give uh, me that. So that's, this is beautiful with my son. We sometimes we'll stop and we'll give it like a minute just mm -hmm. to take a deep breath. And we mm -hmm. say, you know, breathe in. For the minute, just breathing in positive energy and exhaling negative or releasing yourself from what you have no control over. So it's really just stopping, dealing with the, the process. If you guys want to do it with me, we can um, just stop for a second. Yes. Inhale through your nose. Um, clean your mind. Clear, your, clear the blockages out or identify what the blockage is so that you can clear it. And um, through that, whatever, whatever, wherever you want to go next, you kind of release that breath and then that kind of, that'll take you into that. So, sorry. so let's take a deep breath in. 
and release it. And usually, um, I actually do this with the students that I was working with too, um, ha holding the breath for about three to four seconds in between also. So okay. being mindful of that breath in the in-between um, helps you. Well, thank so, you, you, because I think that's helpful for those who are watching. I think it's helpful for us. And it reminds us because you have to be con conscious and mindful to even do that exercise and blocking out all the things, like you said, and, and exhaling anything challenging. So, you know, when were you, when you were living, you know, at St. Anne's with your gorgeous son, uh, what were some of the services or programs that you feel helped you to maybe kind of set you on this path and, and provide a foundation towards your wellness journey? Because it is a journey. Yes, absolutely. Um, for the, the first one is the daycare. That was amazing to have that on site um, because I took advantage of all of the hours that I could uh, while still being able to pick him up on time and then take him to school with me. But being able to work there, so that we had the workforce development program. I was working on site at St. Yes. Anne's. My hours would shift different times. Um, but being able to do that, working in a second, another job, and that would be a travel, and then taking that to school. Um, and I just managed it, but those were, I didn't realize what I was doing at that time, but it being able just to be mindful of myself and where mm -hmm. I had to, how I had to adjust, it was just take, you know, take control of the situation, understand that it's going to be a healthy process because it, that's what it's, that's what it's shown to be. Um, and whatever the outcome is, um, just take it and keep moving. <laughs> um, yeah. kind of what kind of what I feel like we're, we're going we're going through now yes. um, physically and mentally right you know in a, in a sense of uh, yeah preparing so yeah well that's but that but that's awesome that sometimes when we're in the middle of a situation we're not able to put a name on it we don't even realize what it is that we're doing and upon reflection you're able to look at that and see like wow my journey started and this is you know having that moment to be able to have that support because support is also a part of wellness as you know and having a support system is crucial. So tell me a little bit about, you know, parents who are working, who are, you know, going to school right now with the pandemic, it's a significant challenge. You know, people say, well, you're working from home, but you're also um, being the educator, the teacher, you know, trying to juggle your hours, meeting all the goals and outcomes as the teacher and as the parent. Um, what are some of your challenges that you face um, in terms of parenting a teenager at this point, um, a young man, and being an entrepreneur in this in this environment and doing homeschool? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the challenge, the challenge is the challenge. Um, yeah, it's really maintaining the sense of community and understanding that you know together we we can make it. Um, that was that's been just overall all all these years of being a mother, um, just shifting through different communities of support, um, and sometimes understanding that people can only really help to their capacity. So therefore, I got to continue to move on and trust the process, but also. Um, appreciate you know everything that was coming my way so that really helped me and my son and the community since um and and now that we're becoming this virtual space <laughs> of community it's going to be really interesting to see how this flows um and being able to do this because this this too helps to connect with people in different places yes. and understand what that i'm not alone right or you know yes. that you're not alone going yeah. the same thing and that now other, like for example, homeschooling, I don't, there's not too many people that are doing homeschooling. So I had, I struggled with just trying to create that whole, you know, what that looked like. However, because I was able to research, I was plugged in with people like on the East Coast and I saw, oh, this is a culture out here. They do homeschooling. So now I got to research more. Now that the virtual space is available. Everyone more is joining you. Yeah. So yes. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, Maintaining the healthy balance is the challenge yes. <laughs> through it. This is why I'm big on healthy balance because my healthy balance isn't going to look the same as what your healthy balance is going to look like or what Lisa's going to look like. an important point. But yeah. to each person, you know, they find that in themselves and it really comes with the centering, the aligning. I, I, I feel that it comes with the centering and aligning of self and, and, and having a vision of where, you know, you want to go. So, yeah. Well, that, that's <laughs> awesome because 
you know, you think about it, you were you were ahead of the curve in terms of, you know, homeschooling. You are able to share and give people tips on what can be helpful in that process. And one of the things that I think that's important to share is the fact that when you when you've gone through a journey, it is very important that we reach back and share with individuals and give that wisdom and that knowledge because why start all over and 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 not have the support? So we thank you for being an early forerunner in that. Now, positive parenting is is something you know we believe in. We talk about it's not easy to parent with a teenager because. Who, else, who was a teenager at one point? We can all raise our hand, you know, and we weren't the easiest people, you know, we knew everything, right? And uh, we all had that experience, whether someone has a child or not, you remember yourself as a teen. So what is it like to be able to, you know, continue to teach wellness to a teenager, um, especially families that may be struggling at this time? One of the things I know is that, you know, outdoors is a, at a premium. People want to be able to go out, but there's some fears and some guidelines and, and so many things. So how do you look at, you know, sharing a piece of advice with someone who may be struggling with, you know, parenting during this time, especially with young adults? It's really hard. Okay. I had to, as I hear you say this, um, oh, I hope I'm, I don't sound too abrasive, but it's really just do it anyways. Do it. Uh, you have to kind of just make it happen because you won't know until you get on the other side of it. And as you're being able to really just get yourself centered and aligned, no matter what the other side is going to look like, you'll be okay with it if you're doing your work for yourself. Yes. Um, that to me is huge. <laughs> and well, I teach that is. to my son <laughs> also, you know, to, yeah. So you teach your son the same thing because obstacles come up in daily life um, and, and barriers. And it's how yeah, we yeah. work and, and show how to overcome those barriers. So that's great advice. Do it anyway. Make it happen. Don't give up. Because there are many times we have opportunities for giving up, right? Very true. A quick example, um, we had went on a hike in, in Utah and it was like one of the big hikes. I think I put a picture in there and my son looked at it and he looked at me and he was like, I'm not doing this. And I said, Yes, you are. <laughs> We're wow. gonna get through it. <laughs> so when you get over it, you'll be able to appreciate it, you know, and look back and say, Oh, at least I did it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't like it, but we did it. And it was it was So nature. you did the hike in Utah. Wow. That's <laughs> four-hour hike in Utah, and um, wow. so he didn't, you know, he didn't see it at the time, but, you know, I just can use that as an example to say, you've done it, you know, yes. like it wasn't it's something that you didn't want to do, we accomplished it, yeah, yeah. we still it. Yeah. yeah. So, Mira Beauty, um, you, that's part of, you know, what you've evolved with, with your um, efforts to wellness inside and outside. So uh, you sent a picture over, which we're showing now, where you're doing a facial and you're sharing. So how did you get to, you know, this place in terms of, you know, wellness that you've now, you know, started your business and, and, and trying to help other people feel good? Yeah, this, um, it, this was innate in me, I believe. I couldn't identify it with it before because of all the blockages that I had. Mm -hmm. um, but now that I'm able to now that I'm going through my clearing process and in the past probably like six months, I now can brand what I'm doing, which is all healing into my facials. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not about the cosmetics and make your skin look pretty. That's mm -hmm. nice at the booth, but I want it to be like a real internal change of, 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 of starting inside, you know, and I can help you with the outside of it, but you know, that's what it is. So I saw through just my different travels and life and everything happening that people um, don't take care of their skin as much, you know, and as I went to school for it and I got to understand, like, it's more than just the skin, you know, um, I just, I started practicing on people and I saw, I started seeing what areas that I fit in and really bringing in the whole healing aspect of it where I'm breathing, I'm, I'm having breathing exercises in it. I spray like a aura spray, you know, and I say inhale, breathe out. So I, I release um, and then I want that facial experience to be like, you know, like a nurturing, a cherishing, a pampering moment that, you know, you lose sight of everything. And then on the other side of that, you're waking up to, or you're ready for your next move. Same thing as like the breath. Um, yeah. And it just grew on me and it's still yeah. kind of growing and yeah. <laughs> developing. Well, I will say, you know, I always say, um, you know, people model what it is that they're doing and you've always had amazing glowing skin and it comes from within so you're an excellent model for 
that type of uh, glow, that, that, that graciousness of being well. So thank you for joining us. But I want to say one thing before we go. If you, you know, had a moment, which you've done because you're interested in supporting St. Anne's in so many ways, um, if someone's watching that may be a young parent out there right now, what word of wisdom or advice would you give them? Just something brief that based on your journey, your experience, I know you said just do it with the parenting in general, but what word of advice would you give to whether they're at St. Anne's right now or they're in the community? Because you said this virtual platform, we're nationwide. We could be worldwide right now. So what would you tell them? Trust the process. Um, I like to, I want to be simple with it and light with it, um, that, you know, there are doors of opportunities out there, um, but you have to trust, it's, it's, it's okay to trust the process, not have to, it's okay to trust the process. It starts with self, it starts with trusting self and understanding that everything else is here to guide you if you allow it to. But once you center yourself and you know where you're at and you understand the environments that you're in, everything should be taking you the way you need to go. So it's the, uh, the Trust the process. <laughs> Thank you. And so we're going to pivot over and talk to Dr. Nicholas. And you stay there, Shabir. And we'll reconnect with you in a moment. Thank you so much for sharing those amazing nuggets, words of wisdom. Um, your um, insight is helpful for many of us. Um, because I will tell you, parenting doesn't end with just uh, small children. We become grandparents. We also continue. We're always supportive and wanting to, you know, help and, and be a part of our children's lives. So there's always something to learn. Our next guest is Dr. Lisa Nicholas. I'm so excited to have her here. She has an amazing background. She has... Um, She's a mom, you know, she's a mom. And I, I, I don't want to brag when I, when I was reading and, and learning more about her information, I said, she's a mom of a neurosurgeon. It takes a lot of brains to be a neurosurgeon. So that's a big deal in her son and her uh, granddaughter, but she is a doctor who has been working in the areas of um, obstetrical and, and gynecology and at UCLA at the David Geffen um you know, the David Geffen Center at UCLA of Medicine. I just am very amazed at the work that she's done in terms of mentoring and teaching. She is a community member who is very active in several organizations. She provides a level of leadership in this arena of medicine and wellness because when you think about all the things that are going on during this time with the coronavirus, our medical providers are leading the way. And she not only just cares about that side of it, she's a philanthropist as well in terms of giving and supporting many organizations. And so if we can see Lisa on the screen, she just literally finished surgery. So you talk about commitment. Um, I'd be a nervous wreck after something like that, but you've been doing this for many years. How many years have you been in this field, Lisa? Oh, I say about 35 years. Wow, quite a 35 few years. years. Okay. And, and it's been quite a journey for me, but every day is just amazingly exciting. And I just look forward to every opportunity for me to give. Wow. Well, thank you. You're an associate professor. And so you're leading the next generation of doctors. You think about the fact that you're providing the support, but you're leading the journey for wellness for others because those people will be working on generations to come and so how do you find um in this particular you know in this particular moment what are some of the key points that you're sharing with your students about women's wellness because you know if you think about the work that you do and we're talking about motherhood and children and babies you're there at the beginning <laughs> You're right there at the very beginning. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, I thank you for this opportunity to share some of the, my thoughts and feelings about a mom conversation because, you know, we really are in the midst of a very, very unprecedented time. And I have the honor of taking care of women that are pregnant and helping them usher their new lives into the world. And women are very much afraid right now. They're very much afraid because there's a lot of unknowns in regards to this coronavirus. And there's been some speculation that there may even be transfer of this virus 
in utero to the babies. And we're just really very fearful about what some of the research may uh, actually bring to light. But you know, what I try to do is keep everyone tremendously encouraged. The patients that come to me for care, as well as the young doctors that are rendering the care, because we all have to be able to uplift one another and approach this wonderful opportunity to bring new life in the world in a positive way. So what I do is I try to model with regards to being patient. I like to listen to people and not do a lot of talking because I find by listening to people, you can really help to feed in to what they really need to know uh, to do to be well. Okay. Well, that, you know, optimism, hope, and graciousness and, and, and leading from that space is amazing. I think in every role, in every arena, um, that makes such a difference. And I, I, every time I see a pregnant um, person, and I see many on this campus, um, I worry about that. I think about the fear and the level of concern um, that they must have, because we're all working around with a level of fear. And so that's wonderful that you can help um, share the best practice and knowledge and then help those that are moving forward. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of other things. Um, you know, I realized, first of all, I, I'm one that I like to, I noticed we have a typo on your name because it's Nicholas, correct? And, That's and right. I'm, I'm only bringing that forward because when people watch this, I want you to know that this is Dr. Lisa Nicholas. So we need an okay. A in there. We're adding an okay. A, but you're always bringing your A game. So it makes sense that we, we, we add an A to you. So, yes. you know, you're well respected in this arena. Um, you're dealing with patients who are, you know, concerned with the fear around the coronavirus. You're trying to bring hope. You're practicing at UCLA, and you have a variety of clients. Um, you have clients who come to you that, you know, have means and, and, and can, you know, be able to have the insurance or what have you and, and have the supports. You also may have the opportunity to have, you know, people who are, you know, experiencing some challenges. And, you know, we need to make sure that as we talk in the community that, you know, it's universal in terms of what we're feeling. Those who may have the resources and those who may be challenged. The fear is real. But tell me um, a little bit about what you do and how you respond to the needs. More so around if someone's coming to you around maybe challenges with support, uh, resources, versus someone who, you know, has that? What, what are some of the things that you guide them to or have conversations to help? Because there, there are some disparities in the community now, um, maybe not in your setting uh, directly, but what would you say to someone that's watching and saying, wow, my doctor may not have that hope and optimism that Dr. Nicholas has, and what would you kind of say and guide them? Well, first of all, Lorna, it's very important for, you know, all of your listeners to recognize when they go to their doctor, they should be uh, willing and ready to be heard. Women oftentimes will go to their uh, medical provider and have a few issues or concerns that they would like to have uh, actually acknowledged mm -hmm. and addressed. And sometimes with the hustle and bustle that happens in the doctor's office, those particular issues may not be appropriately addressed. Mm -hmm. So I would advise all of uh, our listeners to make sure they have like a little notebook or something they could write down maybe two or three things they really feel is important for their doctor to be able to cover during that visit. And we as a physician have an overview in regards to the things we want to address and make sure that we do during that brief time together. But still, we want to make sure that your concerns and your issues are being addressed. So that's number one. And that has nothing to do with your means or how much money you have or how much insurance you have because you will find that all women may have the same complaint in regards to when they go to the doctor uh my issues were not hers so that's first and foremost secondly you have to feel respected you have to feel as if the person really sees you for who you are and doesn't have this preconceived notion about what you know what you don't know what you feel, what's important to you, all of those things need to be made very, very clear. And once all of those norms or grounds are established, then we can really get into 
the nitty gritty of what's important to have a very successful and I think uh, effective encounter during your visit. So I think those are the two pearls that I would like to really leave with your listeners. Now, in so far as uh, keeping people positive and encouraged, well, you really want to make certain that you have certain suggestions to uh, enable women to be able to navigate through these difficult times. One thing that I find there's tremendous stress and anxiety that we're dealing with. And one uh, thing that can really counteract anxiety is making certain that you get enough rest, you get sleep. Sometimes people just don't get sufficient sleep at night. So they come to the office say with a chief complaint, I'm tired all the time, I'm fatigued all the time. Well. Once I dive into the discussion a little bit uh, deeper, I recognize that they're not getting enough sleep at night. So that means you may not need to have uh, the news on before you go to bed with some of the things that may create and heighten the anxiety. Uh, utilizing some Shamir's uh, breathing techniques. I like the essential oils using lavender and other kind of things to help to give a sense of calmness and maybe some soft music a nice massage, warm shower, all those things to really get yourself into a mindset where you can get a good night's sleep. Thank you. That's great. Rest and sleep is so, you know, people don't realize the impact of um, not getting enough rest. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And I know it actually, Shabir talks about the essential oils as well. That's part of her uh, regimen. So thank you for sharing that. You did say something that made me think about, um, we had a summit uh, last year where we talked about some of the issues around black maternal health and, um, you know, and morbidity and, and, and some of those areas. And it was a, a very kind of proactive conversation. And, you know, it's important where you talk about being respected. We serve and have environments where we have every race and ethnicity here. We do have a preponderance of communities of colors in our programming. And we want what you talked about, respect making sure that people, you know, no preconceived notions and just really caring about your patients. What I hear you saying, which everyone can do, is truly care about their patient. Want the best for them, the way that they would, you would want that for your uh, friend or family member. And when you come from a place of caring, you will give your best. And that's for all people working in every arena. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm sorry, my earbud fell out. This is live television. So um, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, mentorship, because I think about that in, in our setting and how critical it is. But I know mentorship is important to you. And I want to ask you, did you have a mentor? And are you establishing, you know, in establishing your career? And, you know, how did that play into your role around even getting into this field and in wellness? So did you have a mentor coming as you became oh, a young adult? Oh, I've had, I've had so many mentors, Lorna, and I just feel very, very grateful that I had. But I, my first mentor that I can recall was when I was a young medical student. And when I first went to medical school, my first intent was to become a pediatrician. And I didn't have that connection with the professors at the school that enabled me to remain encouraged with that thought process. But once I got into OBGYN, there was a gentleman, his name was Dr. Kenneth Edelin. He was an outstanding physician. He was a black physician. And he took a special interest in me to really make me feel important with what I was trying to do as a medical student. I didn't get the sense of all of those other uh, really elements of regard or concern as he had. And he asked me, did you ever consider going into OBGYN? And I never had until he had shown me the connections he made with his patients, the care that he gave his patients. And then I recognized what is more beautiful than to help to usher a new life into the world. So then I was really sold on it. And I think he was probably my first very important mentor. But my mother, has been a phenomenal mentor for me. Uh, she was a, a retired educator now. Um, she was a school teacher, second grade school teacher, and she later on became uh, a principal of the school. And she had such drive. She had such concern and love for her children in her community that I could see that she was making such a phenomenal difference. I mean, she was in the inner city of Buffalo doing work uh, where oftentimes people may want to discard certain communities, but she said, no, 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 
these children deserve to have the very best. And it was just amazing seeing what she did. That is wonderful. wonderful. And how someone can plant that seed and share yes. information that helps shape all the lives that you've now impacted. So that is wonderful. And your mom just being that role model. So tell me, how does Dr. Lisa Nicholas define wellness? What does that mean to you at this point in your life personally? You know, how do you define wellness? I find wellness, define wellness, as just having a true sense of love for yourself. You have to recognize that in order for you to give to others, you have to be assured that you're doing the correct things to keep yourself well. And that's enabling that balance between your mind, the body, and the spirit. You have to maintain that balance at all times. And if you don't do that, things may get a little lopsided and you will find that you can't be as effective as you need to be. So as insofar as being a physician, you know, I would really want to make certain that people understand the preventive measures that we need to do to keep ourselves well. And as we get older, there's few other things we need to tweak along the way. But for young women that are of childbearing age, it's very important that they maintain a well-balanced diet with good nutrition. They maintain a good exercise program, at least 30 minutes a day. They make certain that when they're in the sun, beautiful, sunny California, they wear proper sunscreen. They wear big hats and things like that. Because even if you have beautiful brown ebony skin, you still can get sunburned and really succumb to some of the ills of skin cancer. You want to make certain that that um, you maintain, you know, a healthy body weight and, uh, you know, you don't have to be skinny, skinny, skinny uh, to, to really look beautiful. I mean, everyone can embrace who they are, where they are, but you want to make certain that you keep it a healthy weight that you won't have impact that would lead you to diabetes or to hypertension or to heart disease or some of these other kind of ills that we can actually uh, try to prevent and avoid. Uh, you want to make certain that you're in environments that are healthy for your mental health. You want to make certain that you try to eliminate other these negative uh, exposures that are going to allow you to get out of the space that you need to be. There are certain people or certain circumstances that you know that may not be the best environment that you should be in. And sometimes it takes a lot of strength to get you out of that environment, particularly if it's your own family of people that you love. So sometimes it requires making very hard decisions. And then avoiding, you know, smoking, alcohol, all those kind of things that sometimes people are leaning on during these times of great stress. Because I find that sometimes people who drink a lot or maybe refer to drugs, they're really trying to medicate themselves from certain kind of challenges that are associated with mental illness. Yeah. So those are a few of the things. Those are some great things. I mean, and it, it is true because, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, um, you know, and we've had a show before where we kind of talked about the, the mental health aspect of it, um, is right now, you know, suicide is on the rise. Um, yes. The rates are going up. We're hearing that in, in, in communities all over the country. We're hearing it because it's more notable because there are celebrities and people who are suffering from significant mental health issues right now. And so I would definitely say if you're watching this and, you know, you're experiencing any of those feelings that, you know, you reach out for help. Um, one of the things that I know there's a stigma sometimes, especially in communities of color and the black community and other cu cultures about therapy and seeking help. I would say if you're experiencing any of those challenges, reach out to someone, talk to someone. And in and, and, and starting with wellness of, of, of loving yourself and loving who you are. And, you know, some sometimes people have a harder time with that. And I would ask people to seek help. But that was a, a wonderful uh, statement. And I would like to um, have you talk about li little words uh, before we transition to bring the Shamir back so we can uh, have the final part of our conversation is you're a grandmother. What does that do for your wellness? And I say that because during these times, people are disconnected physically unless they're living in the same household from their families. And it is hard. And thank goodness for these virtual platforms to be able to blow kisses and do those things. But how, how does that uh, give you a sense of joy? Because joy is a part of wellness. 
Yes, yes. Joy is a part of wellness and being free and willing to laugh when you want to laugh. Exactly. And I think yes. that's something we don't do enough of. Exactly. But my granddaughter, Gabrielle, is just the delight of my life. Uh, she's full of so much life and excitement and energy. And I mean, she keeps me moving at all times. So I've decided that, you know, I'm going to really try to keep myself as healthy as I can be so I can see her get older and older and older and come to maybe a tender age yes. of this. She may be a grandmother one day. So she uh, is very interesting. She gives my daughter a challenge because she's very, very smart. And to the see where she gets us, that from. <laughs> and it, it's interesting to see the dynamics between the three of us. And we're able to FaceTime and do things like that. And I wish I could see her more. But, you know, we have to be very careful with the social distancing. And, you know, I'm a health care worker. My daughter's a health care worker. And her husband is also in an essential worker. So we have to be very careful and mindful. But thank goodness for the technology that allows us to say, uh, socially connected. We don't have to get socially disconnected. We may be physically disconnected, but we certainly don't need to be socially disconnected. Yes. Thank so. you. So what I'm going to do, thank you for being on. You're not leaving yet. I want to bring Shamir back on because we have two amazing mothers in different phases of life, both working and promoting wellness in their own ways. Um, both of you share something in common with caring about the people that you're working with, caring about yourself, loving yourself. Um, and that's very important. Uh, during this time, we need to be aware of maintaining the, the rules and the guidelines. In California, I mentioned this earlier, you know, we have spiked um, in terms of uh, the, the, the positive test. But we can all take a role in that by making sure that we maintain safety. And on our campus, we are still serving the families. Um, they're still in the housing. They're still provided everything that they need. But we're also making sure that people are social distancing. Our staff are there. They're essential workers. So tell us a little bit about, you know, how you talked about mentorship. And Shamir, you have the capacity even though you're still fairly young and, and out of the program to be a mentor and and dr nicholas has been a mentor how do you think people can mentor and and provide supports during this time of you know virtually because there's so many people still in need so what do you have some ideas of how people can do that because sometimes people are feeling that stress in that level of depression because they don't have an opportunity to be that person that they have that role loss. You know, I was out in the community doing this and that. I was helping people. I was doing this. Now I'm at home and I don't have that capacity and I'm feeling sad about it. If someone's feeling that, what are some ideas maybe you have? And I know I haven't asked you this already, but just thinking maybe you have some ideas of some things that people can do to help provide that level of mentorship and guidance during this strange time. Well, you know, my thought is, you know, you always want to try to be encouraging if you want to function as a mentor to someone else. And I think one of the most powerful things that I can do when I'm trying to mentor a young physician or a young mother is share some of my own personal experiences mm -hmm. and recognize that, you know, the road that you've already have tried, I've already been down that road. And I heard Shamir talking about all these issues about, about child care and things and that helped me to reflect back when my children were young and how I was always rushing to pick them up on time, being worried that, you know, we would have to incur more fees for having to take care of the daycare. And my daughter used to always tease me. She says, Mom, why am I always the last one to be picked up? Because I was rushed from the hospital or, you know, trying to balance so many different things. So I can understand those challenges and you can get through these things. And sometimes that requires you to reach out to your whole village and not being afraid to ask other people for help. Sometimes we just a little bit reluctant. We don't want to let pride get into our way, right. but you'd be very surprised how many people would be willing to help you if you just simply ask. Thank you. Thank you. Shamir, you want to add to that? If you want to, I don't want any pressure if not. 
Um, actually, just to kind of go off of what Lisa had said earlier, the mind, body, and spirit or soul, I think that's important to, to really get in alignment with that because when you're doing that inner work, then you already know what your environment is going to be like because you're already, you know, you're, you're preparing yourself for that. Um, and then that village should come with that because you're around, you should, hopefully that work is going to bring you around more like-minded people that's who are right. on that same journey with you. And then you just, that's the village. So just to add on to that one. Mentoring, yes. working out with people, finding a good workout group too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cool. Um, it, or, you know, and doing it early in the morning is good. I think starting your day off early, healthy, and being around good people like that is, is a way, or the key to success, your GPS for a successful day. <laughs> yes, that's a great way to put it. So yes, yes. I want to thank you because part of what we try to do here at St. Anne's is, is total wellness. <laughs> Um, we give opportunities for the physical, the child care. The, it's funny that you both talked about early childhood education and child care. That is why that is a critical part of our, our program because we understand without that support, without having the ability to have a safe, and that's important, a safe space for your child to be able to be there and learn and grow and develop, it limits opportunities for you to work, go to school and all those different things. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for talking about wellness in all its forms. And we will get together once this is all over, we'll walk together. I, I was told recently bicycles are uh, selling and flying off the shelves because people are actually going back to riding bikes and doing things. You know, we're back to the basics. And some of the yes. basics that we've gone back to are good things. It's a challenging time. But some of the basics that we've gone back to are good things. So I'd like to thank you both for being here today. I'd like to um, ask people, you know, we have a, a, a one little segment where I'm going to talk about Beverly Terrace. But I want people to, that are watching this, please give, you know, continue to give comments. You guys are getting great feedback and wonderful comments. You might not be able to see it on your screen, but when this is replayed and people get to share it and you see it, you will see all the amazing comments. We're proud of both of you. You're representative of an entire community of people who care and, and, and work with from a place of love. And I tell you, you can tell when someone cooks with love, works with love, does anything because it is very different. And right now in a community that is very polarized, there's so much going on. Uh, we don't get into the conversations about the politics or any of that. But what we do know is that health is connected with feeling good about yourself, surrounding yourself with those positive circles, making sure that we're fighting and advocating for our health in the community. Shamir experienced that. Lisa talked about it. We have to make sure that we are the best advocates for ourselves. We know our bodies. If you feel something, you know my saying, if you see something, say something. Well, that also works with the body as well. Talk to your doctors, make sure. And thank you both for being here and continued wellness for you and everyone watching because our wealth is our health. Our health yes. is our wealth. It goes in a circle. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. So I was so excited to have them. One of the places where, um, you know, we talked about showing you a, a little clip of one of our, our locations. Beverly Terrace is a space where a lot of the wellness goes on. It happens throughout all our programming. But one of the things I'll say about Beverly Terrace is our newer permanent supportive housing. Um, and we have a space there where, as you can see, uh, there'll be a few pictures uh, where you see our early childhood education center. It's right built in, right within the actual apartment. And that's the community space. And obviously right now during social distancing, but just imagine living in a space that's affordable, healthy, beautiful, and bright. This area here is a space that we want to turn into a beautiful community garden. This is on the rooftop of Beverly Terrace. It is a beautiful scene actually right over there is St. Anne's. And then you can look down and see our amazing early childhood education center. And so when you think about a space where people can meet the spiritual, emotional, mental um, needs uh, and be able to feel really safe, this is an environment. These are food packages that we're giving away each week to all the participants in our program who live in that space. So 
we're excited about the fact that we have these amazing spaces that we work very hard any support that you can provide right now volunteering is in a different space i'm excited at um october 25th we will have you know our evening evening of angels will be virtual and i'm very excited about what that's going to look like wellness is critical right now there's a lot of stress there's a lot of anxiety as the unknowns build up. And the unknowns are building up because we get different information. We're not sure how to maintain our health, but what we do know is that we're capable of taking care of ourselves, wearing our mask when we're in public, making sure that we check on each other, making sure that we are aware of anyone that may have some challenges right now, reaching out to them by phone, or by some type of social media or Skype or, you know, Zoom. I'd like to thank you for all that you continue to do for St. Anne's. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We have people in the community who are reading to our children virtually. We have people who said, you know what, I'm going to ship some toys. I'm going to ship some sheets. We're always in need of a variety of supplies. And, you know, those can be shipped at this point. We're not able to take items being, um, you know, physically brought into our building, just maintaining that safety, but we are able to, you know, receive those via mail. So please contact us, reach out to us if you want to do anything with our organization. And we'd like to ask you to just try to be the best you can be during this time. Wellness, the, the emotional health, and uh, the vibrance that you all bring in our community. Thank you to our board members and all those volunteers who support St. Anne's and our amazing development team and all our staff. I didn't name every aspect of our program today. We have so many areas, but I will say that we are working during this pandemic. We're coming into the office, many of us, those who are working um, you know, at home and, and providing telehealth and the services and our community-based services and, and in a variety of areas. And we just did something really exciting that I do wanna share. And we provided um, laptops for all of our participants in terms of our early childhood education program and their families, because we want them to be able to provide and we want them to be able to um, participate in the distance learning that we're providing until, you know, everything reopens. We're making sure that our young people are getting what they need and to be able to say, wow, you know, we have over 700 laptops and iPads and, you know, I may be transfixing the name because I believe it's iPads. And then also looking to get hotspots and the Wi-Fi service because that is also what it entails to be able to run that because we know that there are inequities out there around, you know, people having the, uh, the Wi-Fi service. So if you have any ideas or want to support that effort, we're very open to that during this time. The technology is a large need. So thank you for everything you do. Continue to provide the support. Watch us on our next version of Momversations. And October 25th is our uh, event, and we're looking forward to that. Keep those comments going. Share, share, share. Thank you. And look at those beautiful faces behind me. Look at those eyes. Every day, they bring me joy. And I hope that you find that joy right now as well. Thank you.